Hey G fans, GoGFan93 here and welcome to day 17 of Godzilla Thon 2014. Today we will be taking a look at Godzilla vs. Biollante. The two versions I have are a bootleg copy and the official Blu-ray release, which I highly recommend getting the Blu-ray release because the movie looks fantastic in high definition. Alright, so <clears throat> Godzilla vs. Biollante. Definitely one of the most, I would say, underrated Godzilla films. I mean, it is it is definitely one of my favorite high sci films. I mean, it's it it's just it's just such a good film. I mean, the characters are so good. The story is really good. I, I the story I really love. I love it's just it's it's very different up to this point in the Godzilla series, and uh, um, it's. I don't know, it's just really awesome the way that this, this whole movie's played out. The music's really awesome. I mean, it, it, actually, the music is extremely awesome. Um, and what's really cool is that even though most of the tracks aren't done by Akira Ifakube, they still manage to fit in Godzilla's theme. They put in the march. It's, it's awesome how they put in some of the classic tunes in this. So it's really awesome. This is the first Heisei film that actually has the Godzilla theme in it. So it's really awesome. Um, and uh, just... And Biollante, the new character, she is awesome, um, and Godzilla looks awesome too. He has a little bit of a change in the suit design to, um, I guess, make him look a little bit more modern. And the design that they went with uh, for this movie, it, it kind of, they kind of use it for the rest of the Heisei film. They, they don't, you know, it's, it's, it's tinkered, it's changed with throughout the films, but mostly this is the look that they stick with, which I kind of like. I, and that's the thing that I love about the Heisei series is that it's every film is has continuity with each other and i love how it's a very self-contained series because the show a series up until godzilla versus the sea monster a lot of the films were just they just kind of it just like happened everything you you couldn't really understand if is this connected or the blah 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 but that's what i love about the heisei series is that it's short but it's very sweet <clears throat> um so yeah basically godzilla's back um obviously uh okay that was stupid okay well um <clears throat> So anyway, so uh, yeah, Godzilla's back, he um, gets out of the volcano, he rises, and he is pissed off, but the reason why he is coming back and why he's on a path for destruction is that he's actually looking for a goal, he's actually trying to find Biollante, because, and, and this is the part of the story that I love about this film, is the fact of this scientist and his daughter dying in this chemical, um, or this uh, compound that gets um, a bomb in it, I guess there was like an assassination attempt or they just wanted to sabotage some of the scientists and um basically i love how the movie starts out how they actually have some flashbacks of 1984 and what happened then and i love how it goes into where they're you know cleaning up the rubble and 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 like the beginning of the film takes place right after the events of 1984 like right after and you have all these guys who are you know getting the g cells because this and this is like the new thing now it's like you know we got to get the g cells because whoever has the g g cells has the most power and i love it um so you have like a couple of these insider kind of military people and they're trying to get the g cells for themselves and it's just like this war you have like all these different kind of people trying to get on the G cells and the, I mean the movie just starts out in an action sequence where you have these a squad of guys take it out and some military dudes they're running away in a subway and then there's this one guy with like the nice white suit and he has this sniper rifle takes them all out he you know he uh, goes along I think he's like I mean, he's definitely some kind of higher um, assassination or assassination person or uh, you know whatever his, his background is they don't really delve too deep into what his uh, why he's doing all that stuff, but he's definitely <clears throat> he's definitely a hitman. Um, so yeah, and then the movie just goes on f like five years later, or however, yeah, I think it's like five four years later, and um, the <clears throat> the doctor guy who uh, his daughter died um, in the explosion. What he did is that he wanted to use uh, the like there was an earthquake, and he basically devoted herself like he he's kind of. He's kind of a little cuckoo, so what he did was that to remind himself that his daughter's still alive, he like 
I, I, I don't know, they don't really explain it too well, but he thinks that her spirit or soul or whatever is in like the flowers and they break though because there's like an earthquake, earth, earthquake because um, Godzilla is, you know, trying to get out of the volcano that he was in. So it falls, it breaks, and then this the doctor guy decides, or scientist guy, not really a doctor, but the scientist guy decides to go with this team who is trying to um, get the G-cells to develop you know, basically weapons, which is really bad. It's like worse than nuclear, um, than a, you know, a nuke or anything like that. Um, which is awesome, because it, it, it definitely has a lot of social commentary on, you know, science mixed with politics and warfare and who has the more power. This film is just, has a lot of good messages in it. Um, so yeah, he, he gets with this team and what he decides to do is he decides to I don't know why he thought that this was a good idea, but he decided to use the G-cells and, and put them in the plants to revive his daughter or something like that. But then what he ended up doing was created a monster, Biollante. Now, Biollante didn't look like this when she first appeared. She actually looked like this tall... I wish I had a figure of it, but I don't. But she's like this tall flower, basically. And um, Godzilla, once he's out of the volcano, he's directly going for it because there's a connection because it's basically Godzilla's sister. I mean, that's basically what this creature is, and that's awesome. The fact that it's like, it's the same creature. I mean, you can see on the design of Biollante, if you look at the back, I mean, those are like Godzilla spikes, in a way. Um, so, uh, yeah, Godzilla just goes on forward, and it's, this is, it's kind of a cool battle. I mean, this, bi you know, the first stage of Biollante doesn't even stand a chance against Godzilla, so Godzilla just decimates her. Then, like, the first half of the film is a lot of setup, like like it usually is in a lot of Godzilla films, but the second half of the film is just non-stop action. It's just like, they're trying to figure out what to do with Godzilla. Um, there's a really interesting scene where they try and... Well, what they're what they're wanting to do is that they're wanting to get the they're wanting to get G cells obviously. So what they're doing is that they're gonna try and tranquilize Godzilla with these by with bacteria or whatever to make him fall asleep so that they can get the G cells. But sadly, Godzilla, I guess he's like a cold-blooded creature, so um, the bacteria can't flow well. So they decide to um and and while they were trying to do this it's really cool this whole setup how they get like a bunch of these rocket launcher guys that go into these buildings and Godzilla's like right in the center of it and they you know they shoot him with the rockets and i just love this one part uh how this the one guy turns his back he's like doing something and then one guy on the other side is going Godzilla he's coming to your position sir watch out and then he's just like huh and he turns around and Godzilla's just like right there and you're just like Hmm, and like Godzilla like opens his mouth, shoots the rocket right in Godzilla's mouth, pisses him off, and then he's just, you know, he says like a one-liner, I don't remember exactly what he said, um, he said something like the, some, the chemical name of it, and he's like, well, it's bad for you, you might as well, you know, or, you know, cigarettes are better for you, or I don't know, whatever he said, um, uh, but then Godzilla just kills him, and, uh, I don't know, that part was just really funny, I love that, um, and, uh, yeah, then just continues on, oh yeah, by the way, they bring back the Super X, so now it's the Super X 2, and they made it to where it can actually deflect Godzilla's beam and shoot it back at him. And that was pretty cool. Um, but it fails because I, for some reason it can't take a lot. So like, you know, Godzilla just keeps on hammering his atomic breath at them and eventually it can't deflect back and the, it can't, it, it starts to malfunction because his atomic breath is just so strong. Um, but yeah, so the Super X is back, but you know, Godzilla takes care of that. And uh, then it's just the final battle. And this is the part of the film that I'm a little bit disappointed in because this final battle seemed to be really short to me. I don't know, it just seems to be not a lengthy battle. But I guess that kind of makes sense because up until this point with Godzilla films, this probably had to be the biggest uh, monster they created. Um, obviously it was more of a puppet than a guy in a rubber suit, obviously. Um, but when I saw the behind the scenes of this foot of this um, character, I mean, it's just the amount of strings and, and puppeteering they had to do with it. I mean, oh my god, it looked really tough. So I can kind of understand why it was a short battle, but I still kind of wish it was a longer battle. Anyway, so um, yeah, they duke it out, and there's a lot of gory scenes. I mean, this is like, this is also a really gory uh, movie, too, because like the, when the tentacles are going after Godzilla, and like, one of the tentacles like goes straight through Godzilla's hand and Godzilla's like ah oh! he just pulls it out and blood's just like spurting everywhere some tentacles are wrapping around Godzilla's neck and like Godzilla bites it down and just blood's flying everywhere it's just like it's really awesome though I love it I love how they're putting gore in it um but uh yeah it's just dark and it I love it especially for the time um 
But yeah, it's the last battle, kind of short, but it's it's short and sweet. Um, and uh, yeah, Godzilla just decimates her. Um, and one of the other scenes that was really funny was when Godzilla just kind of like the bacteria is starting to take effect on him and he's just kind of like whoa and then he just falls forward flat right into the water i don't know that scene was just hilarious like do you think that that was maybe like a blooper and they just kept it in there like you know how there's a lot of like outtakes of godzilla where that suit actor trips by accident and he falls forward do you think that was actually a blooper but they but they kind of made it where it actually looked like it was part of the film i don't know if that uh, that'd be funny um but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it's such a good film. I love this film so much. Uh, it's it's definitely, like, it, it would have to be my second favorite Heisei film next to 1984. It's just that good. And it's just so imaginative the way they do stuff in this film. It's just, like I said, up until this point in the Godzilla franchise, they've never delved into this kind of, um, you know, the G-cells and all this, like, really technical, scientific kind of stuff it's just it's just really cool how they they it's just more grounded more scientific i love it i just love it um someone said i don't remember who it was a long time ago but someone said the heisei series should be like named the bio godzilla series or something because that's basically what this whole series is about it's it's a lot about godzilla's dna with the cells and all that <clears throat> excuse me um but yeah it's just really awesome um another one thing i want to touch upon the movie that I thought was a really funny part was when the um, hitman guy was fighting the main character and they were like fighting in the mud and then like the guy gets up on one of these like um, pads that shoot down artificial um, lightning or something like that I, I don't really exactly know what it is but it's like it's like it looks like lightning but it vaporizes everything and what's so funny is that <laughs> They, used, they wanted to use it for Godzilla to get his temperature up so that the bacteria would flow more. But it, what ended up happening is that this guy ends up going on top of it with his gun and he's about to shoot the main character. And then one of the general guys back at the base just hits the button and he just gets zapped. I just love it because the guy's just like this. And all of a sudden, like, you only know, see lights. And he's like, and he's like, huh? And then just, poosh, just out of, just vaporized. I loved it. I thought that was hilarious. So, um,. Yeah, but no, this this film is it's really good. I highly recommend you guys seeing it. This was actually one of the films that I didn't um, know existed uh, up until I got a little bit older because um, obviously this movie was really hard to find before this Blu-ray came out. Um, but now that the Blu-ray is out, it's really it's easily available. I think they still even sell this at Best Buy, so I, I think it's still being sold. So um, go out and get it because it's really awesome. And they also have a standard DVD version of this. So if you don't have a Blu-ray player, then you can get the standard. DVD which is awesome so um, yeah really like this film it's awesome go watch it if you haven't probably one of the best Godzilla films um, yeah so that's pretty much all I got for you guys so thank you guys so much for watching stay tuned for tomorrow for Godzilla vs King Ghidorah I'll see you guys then stay big G fans